All right, number one, draw a clearly labeled block diagram of a two to one line multiplexer. Multiplexers are fairly straightforward. Yeah, two inputs. That'll give you one output. And you have the selection switch. So you have input zero, input one, selection zero. Right. Explain what is meant by the term logic gate. A logic gate is um uh electronic circuit that gets an input and sends a particular output based on based on a set of rules or something like that based on set rules yeah um write a truth table for the circuit below shown in figure one by listing all possible input bit patterns and their corresponding outputs um what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to kind of analyze the gates you have the two inputs t and v but the output is s but before that happens you have multiple gates that you have to go through so we clearly have a not t and v coming in there and then we have a normal a normal t and a not v coming in so we have to create a scenario for that in our table so we should put the not t and v comes in first and then we have the t and not v um okay let me break it down a little more to each individual one because if you put them together you might get confused so i'll do it and you break down but you don't have to do the individual not and not if you don't want to so we will figure out what not t is which will be one one zero zero we'll figure out what the not v is which will be one zero one zero and now we could do the not t and v which is what is going to be coming out of the and gate so i'll take what is the not t which will be zero one zero zero and then t not v which will be zero 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 wait Oh, I guess zero, 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 zero. I did something wrong. Oh, no. Yeah, because there's an and. So normal T and not V. No, I'm supposed to have a one. Yeah. So normal T and not V. Yeah, so the one and one will give me a one. So if I have two ones, that will give me output of a one. And now I'm doing a or. And the or will basically be where, where there's a one there. Not. So this look like an exclusive or. Basically. All right, now on the part D. That's a lot for four marks, but. Mm, whatever. State which of the following terms may be associated with a single output value. A decoder does not have a single output value. Decoder has multiple. A flip flop is one output value. A multiplexer is one output value for sure. A flip flop technically has two output values. Eh? You have Q and Q prime. But I believe that the answer they're looking for is one, out, one, one output value, which is a flip flop. But that could be wrong. I don't know. A decoder is used to display the number of a teller who's available to serve in the next customer. To serve the next customer at a bank, the seven segment configuration illustrated in figure 2 is used to form the number of the teller. If there are three bits needed to display a digit calculator, how many digits this decoder can display? Um, if they use entry bits, your values will go from 000 to 111. So that will be 7, will be the personal amount of digits, 0 to 7. So actually, 8 digits. 0 to 7 is 8 digits, but 7 is the highest value. Part 2, list the three letters of the segments that must be switched um, on to display the number 5. This is like picking out primary school stuff. You literally just have to look at the letters. That will give you a 5. Okay, so to get a 5, you would have A, F, G, C, D. Yeah, so A, F, G, C, D. Clearly, that will give you the number 5. Then now, uh, find the 4 bit 2's complement of negative 7. Alright, so we figure out what 7 is first. 7 is 1, 1, 1. Well, you gotta represent 7 by itself normally. Then you invert it. Then you add 1 and you'll get 1, 0, 0, 1. So the 4 bit 2's complement of negative 7 is 1, 0, 0, 1. Yes, that is correct. Part G, consider the following floating point representation. 1 bit sign, 3 bit exponent, 5 bit mantissa. What are we going to do? We are going to give the background. So for part G, we have to break it up into its parts, which will be 0, which will mean that it's positive. The exponent will be 0, 1, 1, and 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. It will be the mantissa. So 0, 1, 1, the exponent will become 3. And then we move the point, decimal point, 3 places to the right in the mantissa, which is the 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. We'll get 101.1, and then that translates to 5.5 because the binary calculations would give us 
a half by one on the right hand side and four plus one on the left hand side so that's 5.5 is the answer there number two describe the three main activities that take place in an instruction cycle state in the correct order give one similarity and one difference between ram and hard disk as used in computer systems okay. all right sorry three main activities fetch execute um, fetch the code execute sometimes this actors has four main activities fetch the code execute and store but that's okay Fetch is get instruction from memory, the code is the code, the operand, and the upcode and the operand. Execute is to carry out the calculation in the ALU and store it. Store it back in memory or store it in a register. Um, there are times when this question is what are the four main activities? Fetch the code, execute, and store. Storage is usually part of it. Uh, we give one similarity and one difference between RAM and hard disk as using computer system. RAM is volatile. Um, so one similarity is that they both store information and the difference is RAM is cleared when the power goes off or when the, hard, when the power is removed. Hard drives are permanent. Give two reasons why registers are included in the CPU of a computer. One, registers store information that the that is currently being processed by the CPU. So the yeah, you could get it easily. And two is they are small enough to um, to fit into the CPU and function properly. Yeah, because the axe is included in the CPU, so they are very small and they could store the information that the CPU needs to process. You basically, store it and their yeah, size is very convenient. Next, briefly describe a situation where each of the following can be used. And we start with a supercomputer. If you want to give a third answer for the register question, you can see that the storage is very fast. The storage is fast and it moves at the same speed as the CPU, but that's technically described describing cache, so it could be that that's what they want. Right, briefly describe a situation where each of the following can be used. One is a supercomputer. Supercomputers are used in like um most of the times the go-to answer would be scientific calculations, DNA sequencing. So like predicting weather patterns within extremely complex with extremely complex algorithms. DNA sequencing, scientific calculations, anything like that, gene sequencing, artificial intelligence, such and such. And there's a PDA. Um a PDA is used in working on the go in using a mobile device example sending emails while commuting here yeah, are a situation all these are situations so just applications of the types of computers mainframes are definitely for like banks and large financial institutions that have to store large amounts of data and, and a lot of people have to access it simultaneously so where multiple companies or where multiple computers need to connect to a central database or data store example a bank yeah. um right part you know describe the kind of information that's typically stored in the ROM of a computer. Information that's typically stored in the ROM of a computer would be startup instructions for the computer. Startup instructions for a computer or... No, okay. What is usually stored is information that should not be rewritten frequently or should be permanent. Example, startup instructions for a computer. Yeah, that'll give you that'll give you a good two-mark answer there. And then discuss two reasons why current computers may not be able to work efficiently with new storage devices developed 10 years from now. Um this is basically along the lines of you have different avenues. You could say current computers use um particular interfaces to connect to storage devices and the interfaces that are used interfaces that are used change regularly and in 10 years the new storage devices may just not be able to connect example USB-C and USB 2.0 or USB yeah USB or it could be SATA SATA and um, IDE yeah. so they are different connectors or it could even be a mouse most mice most use USB and before they use PS2 so anyone then you have the compatibility of software that uses current storage methods so the new storage devices may may not be able to be 
read by new um, by older software programs, example reading uh reading a floppy disk now. Yeah, so the question asks about storage devices. So yeah, examples have to be about storage devices, how they connect. So yeah, let's see how they connect. And the physical compatibility would be yeah, floppy disk, you will be able to read it because you may not just have you may not have a floppy drive or you may not have the ability to read magnetic media. That could be the answer there. So that'll be a three mark answer. Once you put the example, the examples will will sell it because discussions always go well when you have examples. Alright, that should be good there for module one.